Hi everyone, it's Olivia from Pindot Press. In this video, we are going to be doing some Rezo tech support. Specifically, we are going to learn how to configure your computer so that you can print two color on the Rezo machine. Now, this is a question I get asked fairly frequently by people who just got their Rezos, so I figure it would just be a lot easier for me to make this video to show you. But before we get started, I'd like to mention three things. Number one, this is not sponsored by Rezo, so Rezo is not paying me to make this video. Number two, I am not a licensed Rezo technician, so if you have some issues with your Rezo, please contact your Rezo salesperson, Rezo tech, dealer distributor, and whatnot. Lastly, I'd like to mention, very important, that I will not be held responsible if you bust up your machine. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so first is you probably wanna be running a Windows system. So if you don't have a Windows computer, then I suggest getting even a cheap one just for printing. Next, we're gonna head over and pick up the drivers from the Rezo website. So I'm just going to type US Rezo drivers and as you can see, this pops up and we're going to download the driver. Then we're going to go into Duplicator and you're going to select the model of Rezo that you have. In my case, I have an MZ1090 and hit search and I'm going to download the 64-bit version. So as you can see here, they support Windows Vista 7, 8.1 and 10 and I am running a Windows 10 system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download that and then we're going to install it. So I've just saved the file to my desktop and I am going to extract it. And I am going to set up the print driver. So do you want to allow? Yes. We want it to be in English. Okay. Before installation, confirm the following points. Shut them down if you have other software applications running and everything. So I'm going to use another connection method because I actually have a network card that connects my computer to the Rezo using the network. So I'm just going to do use another connection network. So it's going to start searching for the Rezo. So I'm just going to turn the Rezo machine on. So it's not actually showing an IP address for my printer, so we're going to get the IP address manually and type that in manually. So to get the IP address of this machine, I've just turned on the printer and gone into dual printing mode so that you can see the screen where you have the admin tab. So we're just going to go into admin and it doesn't really matter, just hit OK. And then to get the IP address, you hit system and then base IP address. So that is actually the IP address for this printer that you have to put into the printer driver so that they can talk to each other and print via the network. So now with the printer turned on and after having obtained the IP address from the printer, I'm just going to type in the IP address right here. So I actually have an MZ10U series, and if you're trying to figure out what kind of printer you have, it's probably going to be at the front of your machine. So as you can see, I have a 1090U, so that's what I'm going to click on. And then I'm going to replace with the new printer driver because we are doing a fresh install just for this video. Do I want to print a test page? Not yet. So we need to reboot the PC, so I'll see you in a little bit. So one of the things you might want to check is to make sure the IP address of your printer is actually working. And to do that, you might want to ping the printer first. So we are going to go into command prompt and we are just going to ping the IP address. So just type ping space and then the IP address separated by dots or periods and hit enter and it's pinging right now and as you can see it worked so it looks like the printer is responding so now let's configure your printer first we're going to go into printers and scanners and we are going to locate the printer so in my case it's the mz10u and we're going to hit manage and then we're going to go into printer properties which will bring up 
the printer device driver dialog box. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the environment tab and I'm actually going to type in the IP address of my printer. And I'm just going to hit auto detection. After that, I'm going to go to print color entry. So this is where a lot of people get tripped up. In the beginning, your printer dialog is going to be set to only be able to print in black and red. So if you have other colored inks, like I have 10 colors and you probably have more than just black and red, you want to add them into this section where it says add so that your computer can recognize the colors that you are putting into the machine. So one of the things that might be confusing is if you have a color that is not on this list. So for example, I have turquoise and turquoise is not individually named in this list on the left. So I'm going to show you how to figure out what that would be equivalent to on your printer. So I'm just going to pop in the turquoise ink cylinder into the machine. When you turn on your printer, you're going to see the screen where it's going to tell you that turquoise is actually called green one. Whoops. So it says green one and here's my turquoise ink. So on the driver, you're going to be looking for green one. So now that we know that turquoise corresponds to green one in this machine, we're just going to go down and look for green one. And we are going to add that to the right side because again, green one corresponds to turquoise in this machine. And you're just going to do that for all the other colors that don't have specifically named equivalents on the left side. So we're just going to add a few more colors that we carry here at Pinot Press. And in fact, melon is actually called yellow one on this machine. So we're going to add that as well. So now we're just going to go through the process of printing a file very quickly. Now every printer is different, so the way they're going to lay out your piece is probably going to be very different from printer to printer, but in terms of just sending a file to print, that's pretty standard. So my friend Patrick actually just sent me this file, which is going to be in blue and red and he sent in a color proof which looks like this. So always send your printer a color proof because it's going to give them an idea of what you're going for and if any modifications need to be made to your file. So if I go to file and print, you're going to see that my printer is the MZ10U and I'm going to go into print settings and under coloring, I can tell what layer to send to which color. For example, if I just wanted to print the blue layer, then I'm just going to make sure the blue layer shows up and I'm going to hit file, print, and go to print settings. And then under coloring, if I hit refresh, actually, if you remember, I put in my turquoise ink cylinder in the first position of the Rezo, so that's why it's saying green one. But if I had put in the blue ink cylinder, then it's going to show up as blue because the computer is talking to the printer to recognize what colors are currently in there. So this is actually where a lot of people trip up when they're first printing in two color using this dialog box is they don't add their colors under printer properties. So I'm going to show you that again very quickly. So if you go into your printers and scanners and you go into your printer and go into printer properties, environment and print color entry. If you're not adding the color that you have from the left to the right print color section, then when you go into print, your color is not going to show in this dialog box. It's only going to show the defaults of black and red. So as you can see, it recognized that I do have turquoise or green one as one of my colors. And so that's why I can print in the color that I have. So when you're ready to print your second color, I'm just going to click on red, which is in the second position. So that is my second color. I'm going to hit file print and back to print settings. And this time under the coloring tab, I'm going to click on dual color print. So green one is still in my first position and my color two is red. But this time under master making color, you want to hit color two only, which means that it's only going to make the second color master. 
So to recap, printing to color is a two-step process. The first step is to create a monocolor print on the first position, which is the first ink color that you have. In my case, it's green one. After the first master has been made, you're going to click on dual color prints and you're going to make sure that color one is still the same color as what you had. And then under color two, you're going to select the second color that is on the second position of your printer and under master making color you're going to click color two only so that instructs the rezo to make the second master for the second color and then you're going to hit print so before i printed patrick's file i actually had to make a couple more adjustments to his file so if I check his color proof, I can tell that his grayscale layers are on the light side. So for the red layer, I had to adjust the darkness levels to about this much, I think would look pretty good. And then for the blue layer, I think that it should be about this dark. So in making these adjustments, I just want to point out that you do not want to make your layers totally dark. So you do not want to make this blue layer this dark, and you also do not want to make your red layer totally dark like this, because that's going to cause a number of printing issues. It's going to make the inking very uneven. It might cause the rezo to jam when you're sending the file over to be printed. And also, all that excess ink might transfer to the back side of the next print that is falling on top of the previous print. And honestly, it's not going to make the color of your print that much more vibrant and saturated. What it's just going to do is it's just going to make the print very, very inky. In fact, if you tone down your layer to about this much, this layer is still going to print really, really solid, but you're just going to be able to avoid all of the aforementioned issues. So that's it for learning how to configure your computer so that you can print to color on the machine. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. I know that I'm currently working on my one pager zine video, so there's going to be a few more zine related videos coming up. So yeah, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. I would also like to say happy Canada Day everybody, and also happy birthday to my sister, Corey!